Hello everybody. Today we are here to discuss about hematinics. Hematinics are the drugs which are associated with anemia. Anemia is a condition in which there is deficiency of red blood cells. In normal blood smear, you can see over here, there are ample amount of red blood cells in the smear. But when it is anemic, there is decrease in the count of RBCs which is nothing but decrease in hemoglobin, decrease in iron. So anemia is associated directly with the iron deficiency. There are different types of anemia, which we can see enlisted over here. Anemia can be due to blood loss. The examples and causes are given over here. Trauma, surgery, GI bleeding, then Erythropoietin deficiencies, which is nothing but hormonal regulation. Erythropoietin is a hormone in our body, which is regulated by the kidneys. That's why when there will be renal insufficiency, it may lead to deficiency of erythropoietin or functional deficiency, which can be due to decrease in bone marrow response. So erythropoietin is associated with the hormonal balance in the body. The nutritional deficiencies, which are nothing but directly the dietary sources like the folate levels, the iron levels, and the vitamin B12 levels. These are directly associated with the nutritional deficiency that leads to anemia. The hemolysis, that is breakdown of heme due to toxins or drug reactions or coagulation abnormalities. All this together leads to anemia. But apart from this, one more type of anemia is there, which is an autoimmune disease, that is sickle cell anemia. I have over here a small video clip to indicate and show you how the sickle anemia works. This is provided by the Birdo Studio from Birdo.com. This is the RBC, which is now can be seen is a, in a sickle shaped form. This sickle shaped red blood cells, they coalesce in the blood vessels, which causes accumulation of red blood cells and deficiency in the end, product, the end sites, that is the different organs in which there will be deficiency of RBCs takes place, which is a type of anemia. We can see over here, the different types by the diagrammatic representation, that is a plastic anemia, then megaloblastic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, and hemolytic anemia. We'll see that megaloblastic anemia is associated with vitamin B12 and folate, which releases a large abnormal size of RBC, which can be seen over here as a mega RBC. It is not a normal red blood cell and there is a big size of RBCs production and lesser quantity of RBCs. Cell division does not take place properly when B12 and folic acid are deficient. So it leads to megaloblastic anemia. Iron deficiency is seen when the RBCs, uh, sorry, the normoblast which are formed before the pre-formulation of RBCs in the normoblast, there is incorporation of iron cells. When this iron, they do not get incorporated in this normoblast, polychromatophilic normoblast, it leads to iron deficiency anemia. And then if any trauma, injury, surgery, any accidental bleeding takes place, it is nothing but hemolytic anemia. We'll discuss hematinics, which are the substances required for formation of blood. And they are given by this form standard classification of hematinics, which is nothing but the iron and maturation factors, that is vitamin B12 and folic acid. These are the major classes of hematinics, which, are, which will be discussed by us in this session. And... One more important aspect which is not mentioned in this classification is erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is given in the form of recomb human recombinant DNA as a human recombinant molecule erythropoietin. So these are the classes which we are going to deal in hematinics. Oral and parenteral are the subclass of iron supplements. And vitamin B12 and folic acid are given in the form of cyanocobalamine, hydroxycobalamine, methylcobalamine, and folic acid in the form of folinic acid. Iron has its fate in our body 
differently at different locations. But before showing its fate, we must learn how this iron gets incorporated. Iron, when it enters into the intestinal lumen, it travels along from the lumen inside the blood to show its action. But before going into the blood, some amount of it is stored in the form of ferritin. Ferritin is the storage house of iron. This ferritin is responsible for storage of iron. Then some amount of ferrous is released in the blood for its tra traveling. For its transportation, it gets associated in the form of transferrin, which helps the iron to get transferred from one position to another. Then leaving behind some amount of ferritin, when iron amount is used in the bone marrow, they are required for production of hemoglobin in the bone marrow and in the uh, and in the same place the hemoglobin is incorporated in the red blood cells as we have seen in the previous diagram in the normoblast where iron cells are incorporated in the normoblast which turn it into erythroblast then we'll see what is the fate of iron in our body when iron is getting absorbed from the intestine at the section of duodenum. The major site of absorption starts from the duodenum. From the duodenum, when it is entering into the intestine, majority of the iron is getting converted into hemoglobin. About 66% of it is getting converted into hemoglobin, which is nothing but getting transport, uh, transported to erythrocytes. Then 25% of it is getting stored in liver in the form of ferritin. 3% of it is required by the muscles and other tissues of the body. 1 milligram, 1 to 2 milligram per day shows normal losses in from the body in the form of mucosal slowing, desquamation, bleeding, menstruation. And also in certain conditions like pregnancy, for placenta development, uh, there is always uh, some amount of iron which is needed. So in pregnancy, the requirement of iron automatically increases. Dietary sources of iron. We must know that how we can acquire iron rather than first dealing with the drugs because any of the time, whenever we are taking drugs from external source, there are certain side effects associated with it. So if we maintain the dietary sources of iron, it will lead to a maintenance of iron and we will not go in a position of deficiency. First, we will discuss the rich, rich sources, which includes liver, egg yolk, oyster, dry fruits, wheat germ, and yeast. The medium sources are meat, chicken, fish, spinach, and banana, whereas the poor sources are milk and milk products and the root vegetables like beetroot, potato, carrot, radish, etc. So this, if we include them in our dietary diet, in our daily meal, we can maintain the iron levels in our body. Then if iron is incorporated in our body as an element, how it gets eliminated? Because an elemental form iron has to be liberated from our body. But as we have seen that there is no such mechanism of iron which is present for its elimination, but as it is absorbed from the intestine, there is a possibility of exfoliation of intestinal cells from which it can get eliminated. And some trace amounts of iron is lost in fissures, urine, bile, and sweat. That's why when a person is on a therapy of iron, the color of the fissures also changes. Treatment for iron deficiency from the classification which we have included, the oral preparations which include in the salt form of elemental iron like the ferrous gluconate, ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate and parenteral iron therapy, which includes iron dextran, which is given in the form of intra muscular intravenous, sodium ferrigluconate, which is given in the form of IV, and iron sucrose, which is given also in the form of IV. But as I have said earlier, the oral supplements, they are associated with certain adverse effects. We have given menomics over here for a better understanding and learning, that is NV, she, BMC. That is nausea, vomiting, staining of teeth, heartburn, epigastric pain, bloating, metallic taste, colic and constipation in common. So these are the adverse effects which makes the therapy of iron challenging.
Then our next aspect here is the formula. How we can calculate the amount of iron which can be given as a dose or what is the requirement by the body? This calculation is given in, in grams. The dose of iron in grams include 0.25 factor multiplied by the difference of normal hemoglobin with the patient's hemoglobin and iron requirement is 4.4 multiplied by the body weight in kg and product of hemoglobin deficit in gram per dl. By this, we can calculate the iron requirement and the dose of iron which has to be prescribed to the patient. Erythropoietin. Next to iron, we'll deal with erythropoietin. As mentioned earlier, erythropoietin is a hormone. Erythropoietin is regulated by kidney. Kidneys, they play an important role in the regulation of erythropoietin. When there will be deficiency of oxygen, decrease in oxygen or anemia in the body, that, that means hemoglobin or RBCs are reduced at the site of action. Uh, kidney, they liberate messages for the liver, liberation and secretion of erythropoietin. Formation of erythropoietin takes place, secretion takes place, and then it is liberate, which regulates and stimulates the process of erythropoiesis. That is, from the bone marrow, the erythropoietin causes stimulation for formation of RBCs and results into erythropoiesis. This process of erythropoietin is important from the aspect when the stem cells they form the burst forming unit of erythroid, they get converted into the colony of erythroids which lead to production of proerythroblasts. This step, important step of pro production of proerythroblasts takes place due to the triggering of erythropoietin. And if there will be insufficiency of erythropoietin, the important step of proerythroblast formation will not take place. So there will be no chance of further steps of iron accumulation and formation of RBCs. The initial step is governed by erythropoietin. When this proerythroblast is formed, this formed of proerythroblast is incorporated by the iron molecules, which then turn into RBCs. Recombinant erythropoietin therapy is given in conjugation with adequate iron intake. Recombinant human erythropoietin is given as a form of epoietin alpha and darbopoietin alpha. These are the two prescribed or medicated form of a recombinant human erythropoietin which is present. The therapeutic uses include epoietin alpha, which is anemia associated with surgery, AIDS, cancer chemotherapy, prematurity and certain inflammatory diseases. And darbopoietin alpha is associated with chronic kidney diseases. This two form of Recombinant human erythropoietin are required in insufficiency of erythropoiesis. Mechanism of action of erythropoietin. The erythropoietin, it works by the secondary messenger system of cascade channels of jack stat pathway. This is a secondary messenger system or a cascade signaling pathway, which is associated by calcium influx at the same time and the RAP RAF, MAPK kinase pathway, all these together kinases, they together work for transformation of working of erythropoietin in the cells, which causes gene activation, transcription, translation in the nucleus, which leads to phosphorylation process and results into the desired effect of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin has certain adverse effects, which is menomics given as UK star, that is uncontrolled hypertension, known hypersensitivity, seizures, thrombotic events, allergic reactions, and red cell aplasia. Later after erythropoietin, we'll deal with vitamin B12 and folic acid. We must know that vitamin B12 is a B-complex vitamin and folic acid is also a part of B-complex. It is vitamin B9. There is a relationship between cobalamine and folate deficiency. When there will be deficiency of folic acid, it will lead to reduction in DNA synthesis. Relative to RNA synthesis results in unbalanced cell growth. And this folic acid deficiency is also caused by vitamin B12. They are associated by this step. Vitamin B12, it leads to its function at uh, folic acid. And then the desired functions are take place. 
when macrocytes become larger in size they are becoming more than the normal in the size but cell division does not take place for which there is megaloblastic anemia resulting at the same time there is glossitis neurologic disease or subacute combined degeneration take place in association with megaloblastic anemia this in short can be termed as as the deficiency of these important vitamins in the body leads to certain drawbacks in the normalcy of the functioning of cell that means the pharmacological actions are associated with this that means folic acid it causes dna synthesis helps in dna synthesis by thymidine synthesis they help in cell growth they help in cell division and vitamin b12 are associated with the production and working of folic acid at the same time they causes different Uh, formations in the body and different actions in the body due to which certain things are avoided mechanism of action mechanism of action of folic acid and vitamin b12 has important elements like the folic acid it reacts via the folate receptor beta and gamma it is biochemically inactive form <coughs> it has to be converted to tetrahydrofolic acid in presence of dihydrofolic reductase which causes tetrahydrofolic acid resulting into dna synthesis and cell division vitamin b12 it enters in the body it gets forms a complex with intrinsic factor and along with intrinsic factor it travels in the gi tract from that it is liberated for the production and uh, helps in the formation of the dna synthesis and cell growth to the uh, folic acid in the cell via the methionine pathway vitamin b12 acts as a cofactor for methionine synthase and l methylmalonyl coenzyme a mutase enzymes they vitamin b12 can be stored for supply for about 3 years in the liver so with this we end up with the hematinics where we have discussed in detail regarding the iron supplements urine parenteral erythropoietin vitamin b12 and folic acid hope to see you soon in our future videos stay tuned this video presentation is powered by the template which is used is powered by the powered template which is used for our designing and thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe